All right, Kevin, it's good to talk to you again. Um, I'm glad we get to do this every year. And uh, it, it's also good to know that, well, I, I think it's good to know, I, I, I believe it is, that you are now moved, You are now a, an independent, uh, what would you say, uh, editor, assistant editor for BuckeyeHuddle.com. Formerly, you, you were with Rivals for a long time. So how do you like the new gigs? Doing great with it. Uh, you know, it, it's exciting. We just launched and uh, there's a lot of excitement around it. It's uh, working with a crew that I've worked with for years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, a new venture. And, and with all of that, you know, there's a lot of challenges there, but, you know, ready to take it on as we get ready for a new uh, college football season. And an exciting one if you're a Buckeye fan. I know every year is different, no question about that, but you're at that point when you have a quarterback like C.J. Stroud who may not be here next year. And that's, uh, I think it's a pretty easy prediction, but you never know. College kids are interesting, especially the money they can make now playing in college, so you never know, but chances are this could be C.J. Stroud's last year, and because of that, there are enough players that are back this season from last season that you just look at it and you go, this really, if you're a fan, this, this has to be a championship season. Yeah. I mean, the, the funny thing is, is that Ohio state generally seems to do well the year before it's supposed to have its big season. I think if we look at 24, uh, if we look at 2014 when they won the first ever college football playoff championship, Everything was circling that 2015 was going to be the year when they won the national championship uh, under Jim Trestle. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be 02 that was going to be the year. It was going to be 03. Uh, you know, they kind of ran into some issues last year. And, you know, I think everybody thought that this 22 season could be the special season. And, and you know, the expectations Colum in Columbus are always national championship or bust. And uh, unfortunately, there have been a couple more busts in there than people had been hoping for. So, you know, we'll see what kind of happens here. But, uh, you know, they, they certainly, you know, unless fate intervenes, they seem to be poised to be in that upper tier. OK, let's get right to it. And Kevin, I, I have to ask you, I might have to ask you this every year uh, with all the success uh, that Ryan Day has had with the program. Uh, is Ryan Day, uh, do you believe he is a college coach? You know, I do. Um, and. Think you know the line is blurring a little bit more now that we're dealing with NIL and a lot of this other stuff. And you know there's some you know there's some coaches that are teachers and there's some coaches that are CEOs and there's some coaches that are coaches and you know and then there's some that are two out of the three. I don't think anybody's truly three out of the three. Um, but you know he yeah he cut his teeth in the NFL for certain. I mean he he had his you know he was a a, a Chip Kelly disciple. I mean he. Uh, had a lot of success in terms of being a positional coach. I know that he's going to be mentioned on some short lists there, even though the NFL really feels like it 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 it's a, it recycles a lot. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of guys be able to make the crossover consistently and 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 do it well. So, uh, you know, do I think that that Ryan Day will never coach another game again in the NFL? No, I I don't know if I'm I'm ready to say that, but for now there are a lot of things that are still on the table that he still wants to accomplish. And I don't, I mean, he's got a, a son who's just starting high school. I mean, I don't, I don't see any movement anytime soon. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're, if we're fortunate enough to be doing this here in five, six years, we may circle back and, and you may be like, well, remember when you said that? And you know, maybe I'll have to, maybe I'll have to eat a little bit of a sandwich on that one. But for now, I think he's a college coach. Well, maybe by then his son will have graduated college and then maybe Things will be different. You never know. That 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 tends to change the mind a lot. But other goals, I would have to believe, not other, but maybe the top goal for, for Coach Day is let's win ourselves a national championship. Absolutely. And, you know, they got to the national championship game in in, in uh in uh what is it in, in 2020, uh lost to Alabama there. Obviously, that was disappointing. Uh, 21, they didn't get a chance to uh, go to the Big Ten championship game with the loss to Michigan. Uh, you know, this might be his best crack here, though, right now with the team that they've got there, a lot of senior leadership, a lot of veterans. Uh, you know, you do lose a lot from the, sure. from last year's team. But, you know, I think that there's a lot of redundancy in terms of the places of where they lost guys. So, you know, this team is is poised to be, you know, a team that could really be special. I think the schedule sets up very well for them. 
you know, they have the early challenge against Notre Dame. Uh, the rest of the non-conference, not much to speak of. Uh, they, I seem, they, they seem to play, play the right teams in the Big Ten, so I think they'll be pr uh, properly challenged if they do get into the college football playoff. Okay, we don't need to spend a whole lot of time on C.J. Stroud. If people want to know about C.J. Stroud, uh, they, they can, they, there's a lot of other places they can go to, to dissect uh, his talents. We know how good he is. Uh, but what I want to know is, uh, is if C.J. Stroud, let's say he either gets injured or when he graduates or when he leaves the school, say, at the end of the season, if that happens, is there someone waiting in the wings? Yeah, they got a couple of guys there. And, you know, the thing is, is that the quarterback rooms these days are going to be a lot thinner than than coaches would like. Ryan Day has come out and said that he would like to have four on scholarship yeah. at any given time. And he has three right now. So that means obviously you have C.J. Stroud and then you have two other guys. you got Kyle McCord, who was a high four-star type of guy out of, out of Philadelphia. Uh, he got to start a game last year when C.J. Stroud was being held out with a shoulder injury. Uh, you know, I think Kyle McCord is somebody who could absolutely step in there and you win a game with him. And then they've got Devin Brown, who is a true freshman out of uh, Arizona. He did uh, he did go to Utah for a little bit, but I mean, I call him an Arizona kid. And um, you know, I think that he's somebody that it, it's it's early. I mean, he is a he's a true freshman who's been on campus for a couple few months. Okay. But I think Ohio State certainly has some guys there. And then let's not forget that. You know, they have uh, the number one player overall in the class of 2024, which just feels like it's so far down the road, already committed in in, uh, in uh, Dylan Rayola. So the quarterbacks are always going to be looking at Ohio State. Ohio State is certainly going to be a destination as long as Ryan Day is there. So I think of any position, that's one that there shouldn't be a ton of concern about for how Ohio State shapes up because when you sit there and you see the numbers – under under Ryan Day, either as a quarterback coach, OC, or as a head coach, you know, the, the, it's just been a full on assault of the Ohio State record book, and you know the, the types of things that people are going to notice. And you know, it it wouldn't hurt if Justin Fields could actually have a line in front of him to block with the Chicago Bears and have some receivers. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that that NFL success because that's been a big bugaboo that Ohio State has not had a successful NFL quarterback in not only recent memory in, in long-term memory. So it, it's, it's, it's been a while since, uh, I don't know, Mike Tomzak. I mean, is that, is that where wow. we're going to have to go with for, for Ohio state at, at, at quarterback? So it, yeah, but, uh, they're fine. Uh, yeah. Especially in college. Uh, that's, that's what it's, that's what it's about. As far as the Buckeye fans are concerned, when they head off to the NFL, it'd be nice, but Hey, you know, as long as they can win us some, uh, big 10 championships and maybe a national championship, that's what matters the most. The running backs. Wow. Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams. Uh, a, I, I don't think there's a better one-two punch talent-wise in all of college football. Who has the highest ceiling? You know, and and I would sit there and say that I think Ohio State and Wisconsin probably have the top two tandems that I could think of right now. I mean, Braylon Allen and Ch uh, Chesma Lucy over at uh, Wisconsin are really good, but you look at the one, two of, of, of uh, Trevion Henderson and Mayan Williams, and, you know, they're very different types of runners. Uh, you know, I will start with uh, Mayan, who's who's a little bit more of the elder statesman. I mean, he is just a violent runner. He's got a low center of gravity. It's really hard to get him down on the ground. Uh, you know, he's somebody that, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more in short yardage. And then you have Trevion Henderson, who's more of just the all around back. I mean, he can run over you. He can make you miss. He certainly has a good amount of speed and and anything that you might need there. So, uh, you know, we we've seen a lot more of of Trevion Henderson in terms of what he's been able to do. So, in some ways, you know, you almost have to kind of go there just because you know we know what we know. But when we see extended run from Mayan, it's been pretty pretty darn good as well. All right. Uh, as far as the uh, receiving options are concerned, incredible what happened last year. You know, Olave's gone and Wilson's gone, and most teams would have been in big trouble in the Rose Bowl at Ohio State. And uh, here comes like a third number one, uh, a number, another kid who's potentially going to be another top 15, top 20 draft pick when he decides to come out. How's the wide receiver situation compared to last year? Well, when you figure that Jackson Smith and Jigba led the team in receptions and led the team in <laughs> yards, uh, you know, I think they're in pretty good shape. And then we also got a bit of a preview in the Rose Bowl against Utah when they didn't have Olave or Wilson 
in that in that game. And we saw Marvin Harrison Jr. step up and he had three touchdowns. And then you just you just continue rolling through the room and you look at Emeka Buka, you look at Julian Fleming. Uh, you know, hopefully this year they have Cam Babb, who's had four ACL injuries going dating back to high school. Uh, he seems to be healthy. He was just honored with the Block O jersey, which is a big leadership type of thing for Ohio State. He was named a captain. Uh, you have Jaden Ballard, who's a a guy who, you know, an in-state guy that you know he was kind of a little bit of boom or bust. And you know, I think people are expecting the boom to happen right now. He's really kind of put it on. And then you have a four-man receiving uh, recruiting class. So I mean, they're going to be they're going to be deep there. I mean, you can't lose two top whatever fifteen receivers in the NFL draft and, you know, in the first round and say, oh, everything's fine. Everything's hunky dory. But, you know, Ohio State's in about as good of a position as anybody can be in terms of those types of losses. So, yeah, uh, I think that C.J. Stroud is going to be quite happy with uh, with his options out Uh, there. Is there one guy that sticks out besides the top two that, hey, you may not know about this guy. He didn't make the big splash in the Rose Bowl, but here's here's maybe the next guy to, to keep an eye on. I'm going to say Emeka Ibuka, and I think that Ohio State fans that are listening are going to be like, well, wait, way to go. You just took the third guy. I mean, you, <laughs> you, you said don't take one or two, so I took three. Yeah, but, but most I people don't know Ibuka, who that is, though. I'll be honest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, Ibuka was a speedster out of Washington State. Um, you know, there were a lot of people uh, disappointed he didn't stay in the uh, Pacific Northwest. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen little flashes. We've seen some acrobatic catches. We've seen him in terms of in the return game. I think he's somebody, especially when they don't play uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba inside, and if they, they can put Egbuka in the slot, I think that he's going to be a real matchup problem. I think that this is going to be his year. Excellent. Uh, what about the tight end position? Tight end position has been kind of quiet the last uh, couple of years. So we know that there's tons of tight ends that come out of Ohio State. Last year, of course, even though he didn't have the numbers that we have seen maybe from a couple of other Ohio State tight ends in the past, still – uh, Jet fans are pretty happy uh, right now to, uh, to 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 have the ability of um, Jeremy Ruckert uh, because it's interesting. You look at his stats and you don't really see it, but you put the film on and you put the big games on and you put his stats compared to maybe not in, in production, but hey, when the ball's thrown his way, he knows how to catch it. I think Jet fans are pretty happy, but is there someone, the next guy along the line, because it seems like Ohio State never has that, that like uh, you know superstar tight end, but they always have those second to fourth round guys that are always serviceable. They they're they're pros when they get to the NFL, and they seem to have long NFL careers. So, is there another guy that is along the, those lines? Yeah, I mean, you don't go to Ohio State to catch fifty passes in a year. That's just not that's not what they use you for i mean there's the blocking and then we see guys you know that as you as you said jeremy record is a good example i mean we've seen other guys go on uh you know jeff hireman spent time in the league marcus boss spent some time in the league um nick vanette spent time in the league so i mean they they certainly get guys nfl ready uh cade stover seems to be the next guy right now uh you know, he's somebody who's played on both sides of the ball during his Ohio State career, just kind of out of necessity. Uh, you know, now he can really settle in at, at tight end. And, you know, we had the opportunity to talk with his position coach here recently about that. And, you know, th- there's a lot of expectations there. And, of course, Cade's like, I'm, I'm going to have 40 catches this year. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll see. With the receivers that Ohio State has and just the way that the offense is set up, and I don't know about that, but I think that Cade Stover is going to be a guy, another guy that people don't think a lot about that Ohio state has a fullback that's playing tight end because we don't see as much fullback in college, but we're starting to see a little bit more fullback in the league. So keep an eye on Mitch Rossi. He's somebody else. And then, you know, right. At, kind of at the next cut, they've got a couple of guys that are just ready to emerge. They got G Scott jr. Who was a former wide receiver who, uh, you know, they put a little bit more weight on him and he's kind of getting there. And then a younger guy named uh, Joe Royer, they seem to be the next couple of guys, but they'll be fine and they'll be able to continue running 12 personnel like they, they like to, cause they'd like to have that extra blocker out there uh, with the two tights. All right. The offensive line. And this is really one of the major uh, assets that Ohio state um, is able to use 
to dominate the opposition, the offensive line. And it seems to always go from an opposition standpoint, it seems to be like 12 deep of just top talented kids. And one goes down. No problem. Five guys go down. No problem. Uh, and there always does seem to be a, a, an upper level player or two every year along the offensive line this year. Any different? Yeah, no, Ohio State. I mean, I think that one to five, everything's settled. I think Ohio State's probably about seven deep, maybe maybe getting to eight. I mean, I think if you have to get to your 10th, you're, sure. you're in trouble. There are not a lot of teams that are <laughs> going to be able to sit there and get to their 10th lineman. And, let, and let, let's also remember, too, it's a matter of where guys fit in. If you sit there and you lose one of your guards, are you having to slide a tackle into guard and then bring in somebody at tackle? So the numbers don't always just match up and it's like, well, we're just going to bring in our sixth guy regardless, because that's not the case. I mean, you have certain guys that can snap the ball and certain guys that are not necessarily trained to snap the ball. But, uh, you know, Ohio state, certainly with Paris Johnson jr. Who is one of the, uh, you know, one of, one of the eyes, you know, a lot of people have eyes on him in terms of being a three and done type of guy in terms of, uh, playing tackle. And the, and, and the reality is, is that he's had to play guard just to be able to get him on the field. He's been, that, you know, that important to the scheme, but they, you know, now he can kind of settle into a natural position. Uh, you know, I think that they're going to be in good shape. Dewan Jones is somebody else, a former basketball player in high school who, you know, massive guy. I mean, you know, towering over everybody, you know, he's down to like three sixty something. Uh, you know, he's somebody that I think that the league will have an, will have a lot of eyes sure. on to see what he's capable of doing. Uh, now that he really feels that he's bought in, in terms of playing football, um, but, you know, you want to see more development out of that second line because the thing is, is that you're constantly churning through there and it's a very physical position and the line is different than anywhere else because you have to play as a unit. So you sit there and you lose somebody. It's not just a matter of that you lose that person. I mean, you guys are all going on anticipation of, you know, the snap and this, that and the other. And, if, you know, it's it's very easy for the house of cards to come tumbling down. But, you know, Ohio State made a, a change on the offensive line in terms of its coaching, bringing in Justin Fry from UCLA. So, um, you know, the early returns have been all pretty strong in terms of what he's been able to do there. But, you know, he walked into a room that, you know, on, in terms of the top end has had, you know, has some dudes. But, you know, I think if we're being completely honest, Ohio State certainly has had some misses on the offensive line in terms of recruiting as well. So, you know, maybe getting to 10 may be a big challenge. Okay. Uh, as far as the uh, center, Weipler, uh He's young. Uh, how does he compare to some of the other really good uh, centers uh, for the Buckeyes? Is uh, is he another kid that, that when he comes out in the next couple of years uh, will probably end up like a you know a, a a serviceable or top level center in the NFL? Well, Ohio State certainly through the years has been blessed with having some uh, Remington Award winners. I mean, if you sit there and you look at uh, you know Pat Elfline and guys like that. Uh, you know, the bar is pretty high, but with Luke, uh, you know, Whipler's a, a solid center uh, there. You know, he stepped in for Harry Miller, who uh, kind of disappeared from the team for a little bit and then came out with, you know, with the news that he was retiring from football. He was kind of dealing with some some, uh, you know, you know, uh, mental mental illness type of things. I mean, yeah, it just, you know, it's a really, you know, it's all a big thing that, you know, that we have to kind of pay attention to in terms of these athletes that are getting to have so much pressure on them. I know that there's so much that's been, that that's been documented through the years in terms of other sports, but, you know, just sticking to football, you know, I, th I think that Luke does a, a really solid job out there and I, I don't think Ohio state really misses a beat. All right. Now let's talk defense and the Buckeyes uh, defense, I believe was probably you tell me but it, it appeared to be the achilles heel of the team last year especially in the michigan game they just couldn't get enough stops when they needed it uh, especially in the front seven there weren't enough players that could apply enough pressure on the quarterback and passing downs uh they had some trouble again uh with michigan in that specific game not that most teams didn't, but that's not what you expect out of Ohio State football. So how is the top seven this year compared to what they uh, had and fielded last season? Yeah, I mean, not only did they have problems against Michigan, they have, I mean, their other loss against Oregon, they yes. really ran into the same issues. And, I mean, Oregon just kept running the same yeah. play over and over again, and Ohio State couldn't do anything about it. And let's also not forget that Ohio State gave up 45 to Utah in the Rose Bowl. So, 
it was an issue. I mean, they made wholesale changes there. Ryan Day brings in Jim Knowles to be the head coach of the defense. Uh, they make changes in the back end as well. Out are Kerry Combs, who goes to Cincinnati, and Matt Barnes, who goes to Memphis. They bring in Perry Aliano from Cincinnati. They bring in Tim Walton from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, you know, they're going to move to more of a 4-2-5 type of system. And, I mean, they're going to have the three safeties out there. Um, you know, as as for what we're going to see in terms of the defensive front, I mean, I think that it's a, it's a system that's going to allow these guys to react a little bit more. I mean, I think that the way that things are set up, it will allow them to be aggressive. But I think the biggest thing is, is that the defense is not going to be predictable. Okay. Uh, you sit there and you look at some programs and it's like, well, you know what we're going to run and we know what we're going to run and we're just going to out execute you. Well, Ohio State certainly, you know, everybody knew what Ohio State was going to run. And unfortunately, Ohio State wasn't able to out execute anybody, or at least not the, the best teams on its schedule. And that ended up being its downfall. So, you know, I think that you're going to sit there and see guys like Zach Harrison and Tyler Friday as some of the older guys and some of the younger guys like JT Tuomolo Ow and Jack Sawyer. I think you're going to see them put up some more, you know, significant havoc type of numbers as they're going to be able to go out there and get after the quarterback. Because I think one of the biggest things last year is Ohio State's lack of pass yes. rush was was a was a was a major issue. Uh in that front seven, Zach Harrison to me is the biggest name. So is there someone else that I should be and, and everyone else should be keeping an eye on? Someone that you think might be a, a blue chip player this year that we just haven't seen from yet. I, I mean, I, I mentioned him. I think keep an eye on JT Tuomolo. Uh, he came in, he, he committed last year on the 4th of July. I mean, he didn't, I mean, he didn't even come in when the summer enrollees came in. He came in late, played a good amount last year, but you know, you could tell, that you know, maybe he had a little bit of a freshman wall, but now he's had a whole year in the program. He's had a whole off season. I, I think I think the development physically, along with maybe some of the changes defensively, are really going to bode well. Uh, I think we're going to see him playing a good amount, and I think that he's going to put up some numbers. Right, and the secondary does not appear to be an issue, or did not appear to be too much of an issue last year, and it looks like it's going to be a major strength again. Uh, this season, and it always is for Ohio State football. Where do you have Ronnie Hickman and Denzel Burke and Cameron Brown, and you could throw even uh, Tanner McAllister in there? I mean, there's a lot of talent uh, playing and roaming around in the defensive backfield. Who's, who's, if you're looking at someone and you're trying to rank him again ceiling wise, who do you think we should uh, keep an eye on? Who, who's, who's got the highest ceiling in that group? Well, one thing I'll throw in, too, is that I think that the only concern that Ohio State fans should have is just the lack of depth that they have at corner. They only have six corners on scholarship, right. and that's certainly an issue in Ohio State throughout fall campus had, you know, Cameron Brown's been on a bit of a pitch count, and they've had a couple other guys that have missed a little bit of time. And, you know, Jordan Hancock's been a little dinged up. I mean, it's, it, you know, there, there, there are some concerns there just in terms of being able to get through, you know, to get to get through with the six guys. So do you sit there and have to sit and cross train a couple of safeties because they're very deep at safety right now to be able to get out there in a, in a pinch because you know what teams aren't going to take it easy on you just because, Oh, you're all, all your corners are hurt. Well, yeah. all right, we'll run. That's just not what it's going to be. But you know, for, to get to your question, I really want to see a full year of Josh Proctor at safety because Josh Proctor has, has been, has, has had two seasons kind of wiped out, you know, midway through due to injuries. Uh, you know, we can sit there and talk about Ronnie Hickman and we can talk about Tanner McAllister, but, you know, I think that Josh Proctor is very important in terms of what the, you know, what the final product is going to look like. And, you know, by all accounts, I think he's done a really good job of getting himself back into shape after uh, being lost for much of the year. Is Denzel Burke, is he considered the top corner right now, talent wise? I think so. I think so. I mean, he came out of a very deep and talented corner class with Kalen Johnson and with, with Jordan Hancock. And if he's the first guy to go and be able to play and play pretty much that whole season, uh, you know, that, 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 that's a big testament of what the team thinks about him. So, you know, I'm not taking anything away from Cameron Brown or, or, or anything like that, but I, you know, I think that if you wanted to sit there and circle and say somebody is, you know, your number one corner, it, it's, it's Burke. And special teams is always uh, another big time asset for this team. They they seem to throw out big time core, uh, kickers and punters, and it's just whoever's the next guy up. So taking a look, uh, Ruggles is the place kicker. Seemed to have a pretty decent season last season. So uh, how does he how does he compare to some of the other really good ones? 
I mean, he was perfect on PATs. I think he was 20 of 21 on field goals. I mean, fortunately, the miss didn't happen in a in a crucial spot. I mean, he nailed the field goal with less than a minute left in the Rose Bowl to, to be able to put Ohio State up 48-45. Uh, you know, he's a transfer from North Carolina. Uh, he, he certainly could have left after last year. He's coming back. I mean, I think that that's a huge gain for them. I mean, if you're an Ohio State fan, you really want to see him kicking point afters and not really a lot of field goals. But it's comforting because you're not – I mean, nobody's going to be successful 100% of the time. It just sure. doesn't happen that way. So being able to have somebody that's, you know, that solid is is very important as as he and Jake Moody are, the t- pro- in my opinion, the top two place kickers in the conference. Uh, punting-wise, are they going to be okay? They'll be fine. Uh, you know, the situation there, again, is – no, you don't. If you're Ohio State, you don't want to punt that much. And you know there have been games where they, you know, punt one or yeah, two no, times. Yeah. And generally, it's in the, uh, it's in the fourth quarter when they're out there running the twos and the threes. So uh, you know, the, they they certainly have had a history of some strong punters. Even though the Ray Guy Award has been a little bit elusive here as of late for them, but uh, Jesse Murko, I mean, is going to do a great job with that. And you know, I think that they'll be that they'll be just fine. And then you know, it's. It, they, you know, they made a change in the last couple of years and actually have a special teams coordinator under under Urban Meyer. It was, you know, Urban was the special teams coordinator as well as the head coach. But Ryan Day has somebody with Parker Fleming. So I think that, you know, th- they certainly are know the importance of it. OK, uh, before I let you go, the last uh, question or two I just wanted to quickly ask you is and you've already answered it with a few of these players. Are there any other potential breakthrough players who we outsiders just don't know? I haven't heard their name yet. You think, yeah, you know what? Keep an eye on this guy that we haven't already talked about. Yeah, um, I'll throw one out on defense, and he's somebody who you know may not may not get an opportunity just based on the depth. But I really like a true freshman, Caden Curry, out of out of the state of Indiana. A little bit of an undersized interior guy. Uh, I you know I watched him during the All Star Circuit. I've watched his high school. I mean, he's just somebody who gets out there and makes plays, uh, you know, going to the offensive side of the ball. You know, how about Jaden Ballard? Uh, you know, we talked about him briefly. He's the the, the boomer bust guy from the state of Ohio. Uh, you know, he's had a really good fall camp at this point. I think he's somebody that that really could emerge that nobody's talking Kevin, about. Kevin, overall mood of uh, you, you, you've been there for a long time. So overall mood are you getting this offseason? Uh, regarding the fu- the uh, the upcoming season for Ohio State, I mean the expectations are through the roof. I mean I think that you have to sit there and and monitor them and be able to say it's one game at a time. And you can't I mean you can't win the Michigan game on September third, but you certainly can ruin your season if you come out and you, nobody's going to be looking past Notre Dame. I mean, but if you sit there and you're, you're you take your eye off the prize, I mean you certainly can screw everything up. But, you know, this is a program that is used to high expectations. This is a fan base that demands excellence. So I I think that, you know, the expectations there that this team has to, you know, has to win the Big Ten, get into the college football playoff and make it further than they did in in, in 20, which means win the whole darn thing. That's it. It's about winning the championship now, because I tell you what, there's probably a lot of people who have never who, who don't realize that Ryan Day hasn't won a national championship yet. That's how successful he has been as the head coach at Ohio state, but that's coming. I don't think there's any question about it. And I think this year might be the year with CJ Stroud. So uh, lastly, and that's all about, uh, of course, not just Buck, uh, Buckeye huddle, but you have your own show, Kevin. I do. I do. I, I have, it's called the big me kickoff. It's a playoff of the big noon kickoff. I guess that would make me big noon. So it's the big me <laughs> kickoff and you can find me, uh, you can find me on all of the normal podcasting channels as well as, as, as well as on the Buckeye huddle YouTube awesome. page. Kevin, it's always great. I'm, I'm just uh, very fortunate that you take your time every year to get us ready for the season. And then sometimes depending on the season, we also get a chance to talk to you during the season. And I hope this season is no different. Thanks a lot, Kevin. We'll talk to you again sometime soon. Absolutely.